February 23rd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Leviticus chapters 11 and 12 from the Old Testament. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying to them, Tell the Israelites, this is the kind of creature you may eat from among all the animals that are on the land. You may eat any among the animals that has a divided hoof. The hooves are completely split in two, and that also chews the cud. However, you must not eat these from among those that chew the cud and have divided hooves. The camel is unclean to you because it chews the cud even though its hoof is not divided. The rock badger is unclean to you because it chews the cud even though its hoof is not divided. The hare is unclean to you because it chews the cud even though its hoof is not divided. The pig is unclean to you because its hoof is divided. The hoof is completely split in two even though it does not chew the cud. You must not eat from their meat, and you must not touch their carcasses. They are unclean to you. These you can eat from all creatures that are in the water. Any creature in the water that have both fins and scales, whether in the seas or in the streams, you may eat. But any creatures that do not have both fins and scales, whether in the seas or in the streams, from all the swarming things of the water and from all the living creatures that are in the water are detestable to you. Since they are detestable to you, you must not eat their meat and their carcass you must detest. Any creature in the water that does not have both fins and scales is detestable to you. These you are to detest from among the birds. They must not be eaten because they are detestable. The griffin vulture, the bearded vulture, the black vulture, the kite, the buzzard of any kind, every kind of crow, the eagle owl, the short-eared owl, the long-eared owl, the hawk of any kind, the little owl, the cormamart, the screech owl, the white owl, the scops owl, the osprey, the stork, the heron of any kind, the hoopoe, and the bat. Every winged swarming thing that walks on all fours is detestable to you. However, this you may eat from all the winged swarming things that walk on all fours, which have jointed legs to hop with on the land. These you may eat from them, the locust of any kind, the bald locust of any kind, the cricket of any kind, the grasshopper of any kind. But any other winged swarming thing that has four legs is detestable to you. By these you defile yourselves. Anyone who touches their carcass will be unclean until the evening, and anyone who carries their carcass must wash his clothes and will be unclean until the evening. All animals that divide the hoof, but it is not completely split in two and do not chew the cud, are unclean to you. Anyone who touches them becomes unclean. All that walk on their paws among all the creatures that walk on all fours are unclean to you. Anyone who touches their carcass will be unclean until the evening. And the one who carries their carcass must wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. They are unclean to you. Now this is what is unclean to you among the swarming things that swarm on the land. The rat, the mouse, the large lizard of any kind, the Mediterranean gecko, the spotted lizard, the wall gecko, the skink, and the chameleon. Those are the ones that are unclean to you among all the swarming things. Anyone who touches them when they die will be unclean until evening. Also, anything they fall on when they die will become unclean. Any wood vessel or garment or article of leather or sackcloth. Any such vessel with which work is done must be immersed in water and will be unclean until the evening. Then it will become clean. As for any clay vessel they fall into, everything in it will become unclean and you must break it. Any food that may be eaten, which becomes soaked with water, will become unclean. Anything drinkable in any such vessel will become unclean. Anything their carcass may fall on will become unclean. An oven or small stove must be smashed to pieces. They are unclean, and they will stay unclean to you. However, a spring or a cistern, which collects water, will be clean, but one who touches their carcass will be unclean. Now, if such a carcass falls on any sowing seed, which is to be sown, it is clean. But if water is put on the seed and such a carcass falls on it, it is unclean to you. Now, if an animal that you may eat dies, whoever touches its carcass will be unclean until the evening. 
One who eats from its carcass must wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening, and whoever carries its carcass must wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. Every swarming thing that swarms on the land is detestable. It must not be eaten. You must not eat anything that crawls on its belly or anything that walks on all fours or on any number of legs of all the swarming things that swarm on the land because they are detestable. Do not make yourselves detestable by any of the swarming things. You must not defile yourselves by them and become unclean by them. For I am the Lord your God, and you are to sanctify yourselves and be holy because I am holy. You must not defile yourselves by any of the swarming things that creep on the ground. For I am the Lord who brought you up from the land of Egypt to be your God, and you are to be holy because I am holy. This is the law of the land animals, the birds, all the living creatures that move in the water, and all the creatures that swarm on the land, to distinguish between the unclean and the clean between the living creatures that may be eaten and the living creatures that must not be eaten. The Lord spoke to Moses, Tell the Israelites, when a woman produces offspring and bears a male child, she will be unclean seven days, as she is unclean during the days of her menstruation. On the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin must be circumcised. Then she will remain 33 days in blood purity. She must not touch anything holy, and she must not enter the sanctuary until the days of her purification are fulfilled. If she bears a female child, she will be impure fourteen days as during her menstrual flow, and she will remain sixty-six days in blood purity. When the days of her purification are completed for a son or for a daughter, she must bring a one-year-old lamb for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or turtle dove for a sin offering to the entrance of the meeting tent to the priest. The priest is to present it before the Lord and make atonement on her behalf, and she will be clean from her flow of blood. This is the law of the one who bears a child for the male or the female child. If she cannot afford a sheep, then she must take two turtle doves or two young pigeons one for a burnt offering and one for a sin offering, and the priest is to make atonement on her behalf, and she will be clean. God, I think this, especially this last part where he's talking about the woman uh, and giving birth, and it's interesting because I've heard other people take offense to some of these verses. But God promised back when original sin occurred back in Genesis that this would happen, um, that there would be consequences for the sin for both male and female. And the female's consequences, um, part of it comes from giving birth. And so this uh, need to make pure what was impure through the blood uh, is part of that. And I think about when we sin today, we have Jesus who intercedes on our behalf to forgive our sins, that his sacrifice is our lamb sacrifice. But it doesn't mean that the consequences go away. You know, just because we're forgiven doesn't mean that we get a clean slate there's still usually things we have to deal with, whether why we did it in the first place and in our need to fix that or the consequences of our sin, whether it be financial or sexual or egotistical. There's usually other fallout that happens from our sin. And so here we are generations and generations later after Eve and the fallout is still happening the consequences are still happening because of that sin. So when I make choices, which are sinful choices, usually I am making them because of my ego. It's because I want something that I've either been told I can't have, no, I shouldn't have <laughs> or want in some way. When I choose that sin, even though it's on an egotistical level, 
for the sin, for the choice, I'm actually making an even, even bigger selfish choice on top of that because the consequences will probably have ramifications for a lot of people and not just me. Sometimes even small sins have ramifications for other people. And so when I make that choice to be selfish, when I make that choice to sin against you, and, and I think it's just a, a sin choice between you and I, God, I think stories like this are, are an important reminder that even though our sins are forgiven, that the consequences can still be there, sometimes for generations to come. I do thank you very much, more than I'll ever be able to thank you for the sacrifice of your son for the forgiveness of our sins. We deserve the consequences <laughs> from our sins. So the fact that your grace and mercy bless us with the forgiveness of, forgiveness of our sins for something we don't deserve is just amazing. But let us remember the next time we are making choices that our choices usually don't just affect us. They affect the people around us. They affect people we love. They affect our children. They affect our significant others. They affect our family. They affect our friends. And potentially they can affect generations as well. Please help us be mindful of that today as we work on drawing closer to you, God. In your son's name we pray. Amen.